Yo, yo, this is it. I'm Mr. Fade, and you're listening to Attack of the Beats on illmusic.com. Five beats, five reviews, that's what I do. And uh, we got the Beat This competition coming up. And it's going to be October 7th and 8th, which means that uh, I need to get your beat ready because uh, there's a theme, and this time it's an elevator music theme. That means, you know that famous elevator music song? You got to sample that, you got to do something with that and come up with something special. So if you're willing to do that, make sure you get your beat ready for that. But uh, let's get into it right away. Attack of the Beats here with uh, Arvin Armani. Actually, sorry, it's now Armani. I think it should have stayed as Arvin Armani. I think that's more unique. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm still going to call you Arvin. That's just this is what I'm used to. Anyway, Armani with uh, Bachin. What the hell is that? All right, let's check it out. Right, right, right. Okay, so that was uh, Arvin Armani with Batchin, B Hat Chan. What the hell is that? I don't, I don't know. All right, so I like this beat. It's um, it sounds nice. It's got a nice swing to it. Um, I wasn't expecting those types of drums though because it sounds like more of like a like a boom bap style or something. Uh, but yeah, it really fits well. I like it, and um, I like how you have different sounds, you know, coming in now, but. Uh, the main thing was the bass line. It sounds really good, but the thing is that, I don't know, I just felt like that first part of the bass line you did, uh, you should keep that all the way throughout, or at least maybe, like, let's say, three bars, and then like when you when you bring it down to scale, like just for the, like the, the fourth bar, let's say. Something like that, because um, as soon as you, you, you had it like at, you know, the first scale, and then you brought it down, you know, like up and down like that, if you know what I mean, um, it just kind of changed the vibe of it, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just, uh, it's good. It's just, uh, I just thought it would be better if you kept it all the way through the way you had it for that first part. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but, you know. Uh, but, yeah, anyway. But uh, I do like it. It's just that just that stuff with the bass line stuff. And uh, I just think, that, think, like, when you do that, it just sounds like you're playing with it a little too much. Um, you know, especially you have like, a little part at the end. It kind of goes up and then, come, like, really quick and then comes back down. So, but that's just me nitpicking, whatever. So, uh, but for what you have, it's nice. I like it. I can definitely hear some vocals on top of this one for sure. And um, you can kind of use this for like uh, when we do the beat this Halloween theme. Maybe you could use that or something, but maybe not actually. Maybe you need something a little more evil than this or a lot more evil actually. But, um, but yeah, this is dope. I like it. So, um, yeah. All right. Okay. So, next up, we've got uh, Science with Art of War. Let's check it out.
Alright, right, right. Okay, so that was uh, Science with Art of War. Now, this uh, beat fits the title very well, or, or vice versa. It was named properly. Um, definitely like a primo style there. I like it. Um, it's just, I just find for what you have, because it, it just repeats all the way through, uh, I find that this would be better off just as the hook of your beat. Because I, I thought maybe there was going to be like a break all of a sudden, you go into like the main part of the beat or something, but instead you just kept it all the way through. Um, and uh, even though it sounds really good, I would use it just for the hook, really, especially with the, because of the horns, you know, like um, the way they, they are and stuff, the way they sound. Uh, definitely use it as just a hook, though, you know, and uh, maybe for like the main verse part, you could have, you know, um, like you know, rely more on like let's say the drums and and like some bass or something like that, uh, you know. Maybe have something in the background, some guitar or strings or something. Um, but definitely have this as the as the hook for sure, because uh, just looping it all the way through for for the two minutes there, it's uh, I was like, no, no, it can't it can't be the same. I mean, you know, then again, I mean, Primo does that, right? I mean, he, when he does beats like this, that's his you know his strength, that's his forte right there. And uh, and when you have rappers on top, of course, you know, people aren't really gonna pay attention to the beat just looping all the way through like that. But in this case, you know, just as an instrumental itself, yeah, it just gets repetitive, of course, you know. But but I would have just left it as a hook, you know, so um, just consider that, you know, and um, yeah, that's it. All right, so next up we've got uh, Oni Calf with It's Always a Better Girl. All right, let's check it out. Right, right, right. Okay, so that was uh, on the calf with "It's Always About a Girl." Now for this one, um, you know, it sounds really good. It's nice and chill, nice and laid back, the beat and all that. And then you had the vocals coming throughout, right? And that's fine. But I'm sorry, man. I thought we were done with the auto tune. I, I, really, I really thought everybody was done. I, I know people were still gonna gonna use that stuff, but um, if it wasn't for the auto tune, I'd be like, yeah, it sounds a lot better, you know. But but uh, I'd like to hear it with without the auto tune. If you had just the vocals like that, you know, just smoothed out and all that, but uh, just natural. But um, let's say, for example, you take the vocals out completely. Now, the beat you have, you know, you, you know, the drums are on point. You know, you got the the, the repetitive, um, you know, like uh, keys in the background and stuff. Um, so let's say you have just that. Then I would say, okay, keep that. And then uh, what's missing then is some strings. So, have some strings that are in the background, um, you know, not too too low or whatever, but I would just have, like, the strings, uh, actually more like a like a lead or something, you know, but uh, if you were to take away the vocals and stuff, so. But even if you keep the vocals in, like I said, get rid of the auto-tune, have some strings, maybe uh, just, just, like, really low in the background or something, but if you took the vocals out, I think what would really fit well with this would be some strings. 
So try something like that because the rest sounds really good. It's just um, it's just those vocals, man. You know, but um, I think um, I think T Pain himself was like, "Yo, we gotta retire Auto Tune. Like we just like nobody should use that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or even if it's it is used, it should be more more like more subtle. You know, like uh, not so obvious or something. You know, but." Anyway, yeah, so uh, other than that, though, uh, I do like the beat. It's chill, and uh, it fits well for the whole vibe and all that. But uh, definitely consider the strings, all right? All right, so next up, we've got uh, Ulex Burn with Rough House. Let's check it out. Right, right, right. Okay, so that was uh, Ulex Burn with Rough House. That's a fitting title for that beat because it's a very, very rough beat. I like it. A uh, nice uh, low end, like a saw bass you got going on there. Um, really rough beat, really, um, uh, you know, like uh, eerie horror type beat and stuff. Uh, but um, I just thought, like, after the first, let's say, eight bars, that you would take out that high pitched string whistle thing you have, or whatever. And I uh, just have like, you know, the drums and that bass and stuff and uh, that percussion you have and all. I just carry that for a while and then bring, maybe bring in that, that string um, or whistle, whatever it is there. Bring that in later on or something. Uh, and maybe for the, the main verse part, just have, um, I think, uh, some strings, you know, like dun, 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 like that. Like have that just kind of creep it up in the background or something like that you know what i mean i think that would fit very well you know or actually you could just have like something uh if you want to throw in like very subtle though very th throw in some uh, electric guitar man some rock guitar or something like that. throw that in a uh, pan to one of the sides and uh, i think that would make a, a huge difference with that you know but uh for what you have though it is good i like it uh like i said very rough uh mix it well together i like it um but uh, yeah just a few changes like that and i think it'd be a lot better you know but uh other than that, though, I like it. All right, so next up, we've got uh, the last beat. It's uh, the Sire Beats with the upper hand. Let's check it out.
All right, all right, all right. Okay, so that was the Sire Beats with the upper hand. All right, so I was waiting at the beginning. I hear these drums, and you hear these chop samples and all that, and I was waiting for a bass line. I was like, you better bring one in, man. So after those, you know, eight bars, whatever, then it finally came in. I was like, oh, finally, okay, because, you know, too often I've heard beats like that where, you know, they sound good, but then there's no bass line. You know, there's nothing there and stuff. So the bass line you have, um, even though it's good, you, you brought one in. I wouldn't have necessarily picked a sub bass for that one. Um, I don't know, maybe you just couldn't find something that goes with those samples. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I feel you, man. I mean, I know sometimes it's hard to find something that's good like that. Uh, maybe you could have taken, you know, your chops like that and just had to, like, uh, copy them to a low pass, use that as your baseline. I don't know. Um, but uh, for a sub bass, yeah, it's hard because uh, sometimes it doesn't always fit. Uh, but for this one, for the for the type of vibe, you know, this this one gives off. Uh, I wouldn't use that bass, that type of bass. Um, I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, for what you have though, I like it. It's dope. Um, except that towards the end, there was like a little second there where I hear this string part, and then like just for a second, I'm like, what the hell was that? Like, what what, what was that? And I was like, use that, you know. Like, so I want to hear more of that, you know. So. If you would use more of that stuff, that string part, I was like, yo, that, that'd be a lot nicer, you know? So, uh, because, you know, the chops you have, yeah, it does get a little repetitive, especially that first chop that keeps, you know, that, that, that D, 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 that one, like, a little repetitive. But if you had something with that string part, I don't know what the hell that was, but uh, I'd like to hear that. So, uh, but other than that, I like it. It's a, it's a good beat. Uh, it just needs a, you know, adjustment with the bass and um, do something with the strings, man. All right. All right, so that's it for me. I'm Mr. Fade. This is Attack of the Beats. Keep sending your beats in. I'll keep reviewing them. And my favorite beat is... The winner is... Drum roll, please. Armani. With Batchin, I guess. All right, let's check it out. Thank you. 